Welcome to Back Chat, uh, powered by Fleet Network for season 2023. Very excited to have this man in the house. Uh, been chasing him for a little while. No, I shouldn't say chasing. He's he's come out in the uh, footy budget this this week, the footy record for mm-hmm. AFL, and said this is his favourite podcast in the world. So we are very <laughs> privileged to have this man on. Lockie Schultz from the Freo Footy Club joins shooter. us. How are you, Shooter? Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. I'm going very well. Now, now, mate, we ask uh, – look, if this is your favourite podcast, I probably don't even need to ask this question, but <laughs> I will ask just in case you haven't listened to many episodes. Uh, we ask the same question to our guests every week. Uh doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter what you've done. We know you've won a Ross Glendening Allen medal. We know you've done that. Mm-hmm. We know you kick bags. We know that when you kick multiple goals, your team wins. We know all that, right? Yep. We know you're a superstar in the VFL, TAC Cup. You're a big country boy. I mean, seriously, I don't know. I don't know, pff, like, what else we can do there. <laughs> just here to say I don't really care for just a moment. I want to know your greatest sporting achievement not on the football field. So, look, footy, you're great. You're very good at it. We understand. But we want to know what else you've done not in the footy realm. Dan Conce, for instance, is a cricketer, mm. as you can see Big right time. here. Big five cricketer. for 16, under 12, grand final. Steps up to the plate. Team loses, but he still takes yep. five for 16. Uh, I am an under nines 80 metre hurdle champion, state champion. What have you got right. for a shooter? Um, <clears throat> yeah, probably I'm on in the athletics. Athletics um, realm as well. Really? Grew Very up um, doing a little last, I think, under 11s or under 12s. Um, went, to, went to state, four events, three first, one second. Holy Oof. shit. Um, the second was, was heartbreaking though. What I, events? 100 metres, 200 metres, long jump, triple jump. Who the fuck Why do I think you'd be like a shot putter? I don't know, like <laughs> some sort of Is that a call? I, should, I probably yeah. should be now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a sprinter? I was. I wouldn't say it anymore, but I was. Really? Yeah. So state under 12s champion. Yeah, and yeah, the actually the triple jumps what killed me. I um I was leading the whole entire way. And then the last kid on the last jump beat me. And he had there was nowhere near my, like my what I'd set. So I was like, You're joking. And, and that was for the clean sweep and I didn't gee. get it. What was his name? <laughs> Oh, you remember it. I don't. It was irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, we want to go back to the start. Uh, as I mentioned, you're a big country boy, Moama, near Echuca, for those playing along at home. Uh, what's what's life like growing up for you as a kid? You play sport. You've got brothers and sisters, mum and dad. Yeah. What's it like for you? Um, yeah, growing up as a kid, I was actually born in East Bentley in Melbourne. Okay. Spent a year there and then um, the family used to do a few – um, holidays down on the, in the bush in, in the Chukamayama and decided that it was going to be a good place to raise me and my sister. I've got an older sister, Courtney, um, two years older. And so we moved down there and um, our whole childhood was re- revolved around sort of sport, little athletics, uh, footy, cricket, soccer. Um, and then every summer, obviously the Murray River goes through there. So every summer we're just on the water, um, behind the boat, skiing, wakeboarding, kneeboarding, whatever. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was a, it's a very, very um, unique childhood uh, living in the country in Victoria. It's, um, they breed them different down there. so Buried them well. They do. Yeah, um, but, um, yeah, it was awesome. We, um, yeah, we had a really happy family and um, had um, everything sort of given to us, me and my sister. My parents did a lot for us, especially mum driving us ridiculous miles all over the country to let us achieve our dreams and um and yeah that probably stemmed from just be- having the sort of experience of living in the country as a kid and um and growing up through that those pathways is that what it was like so you know kids that grow up in the country got to go long ways to play sport you don't have the oval a couple of blocks down <laughs> you know the local footy oval that dan Cons was playing at and the cool near bombers <laughs> is, is that on. is that what sort of hours are you covering to go and play footy when you're growing up yeah well so in, in our league, sort of, you travel, like, we have, a, like, a local footy oval on our local side. Um, there's probably three ovals, three teams in town, Shuka Miama combined. Um, but for Miama, we, if we weren't playing a Chuka, one of the Chuka sides, you could travel up to two and a half hours to yeah. get to yeah. um, Mulwayla and, and places like that, which is near Yarrawonga. Um, and, and that, yeah, so there's a lot of travelling involved. And then, obviously, if you want to take the next step and... Um, and try yourself to see how far you can go. Sort of because you're, mine is New South Wales. So 
all my state footy growing up was all New South Wales, GWS Academy, New South Wales. I was, right. I was driving to Canberra every second so weekend. So if I called you a wow. Vic, Vic country boy and you're actually a New South Welshman. Well, you were born in you were born in Victoria. I was born in Victoria, so. But my mum is in New South Wales. My mum is New South Wales, so oh, I do fuck, call myself. I apologise. No, to the people no, it's a common mistake. And I sort of sit on sit on the border of it. I I claim both. I um, <laughs> if I got asked like state of origin, who do you go for? It's New South Wales. But really, um, Good. I'd say I'm a Victorian. I'd, I'd, I would say it just because I was born there, but growing up in New South Wales, I'm also New South That's Wales. That's the right attitude. Where you're born is the state of origin. I mean, that is That's genuinely right. the definition. There's a lot of people that roll around, Josh Kennedy being one yeah, of those guys. Northampton. Born in no. Victoria. Uh, he lived in Canberra and then he calls himself a West Australian. He's not. Okay? <laughs> Andy Brayshaw, exactly the same. Reckons he's a crow eater. He was born there, moved to Melbourne, and then lives here. So he calls himself a crow eater, but then it depends who he's around. <laughs> yeah, right. Got to fit in. Yeah. yeah, correct. Okay, very good. I haven't heard that from Hammond. We might have to put that yeah. to him. Uh, so Shooter, right? Called you that off the top. It's your nickname. Uh, where's that from? Uh, it was actually Dad's nickname. And as long as I can remember, I reckon it oh, must have been early, very early days in primary school. Must um his his mates would just say shooter junior or whatever when they, when I was around and and then I don't know it must have s- kids caught on at school and just went from there and I've honestly go by that ever since I was about five or six years old and really yeah even if you said locky I would like struggle to look at you as a <laughs> shooter yeah. that seems to be a country thing I reckon like the amount of people that have come on the show and like their nicknames like where does it come from I was actually my dad's nickname but everyone started calling me it I don't know yeah like, yeah you're, you're thinking of Alex Pierce. Hey, his yeah, dad was Moose. Moose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Moose. Yeah. Yep. Bunger. Shannon, yeah, that's, right. that's the same as that. Yep. Isn't you- Sticks, isn't, doesn't they, like, isn't Ham- uh, Hammer's grandparent Sticks and Maybe. his dad Sticks? Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, so, Shooter, you can bring that to the club. But before you get over here, so talking about, you know, growing up, Moama, Achuka, um, what's, what's school like for you? You, you a fan of that? Oh, I've, no. Nah. I've read potentially it wasn't the <laughs> most favourite. Oh, it wasn't for me, no. I, I wasn't a dumb kid. Like, I, I actually got pretty good grades and, and stuff like that, but I just hated being there, hated being told what to do and I was a bit impatient with it all and just couldn't sit still and just wanted to – I love sport, obviously, but I got to about – must have, I went to a grammar school in high school. So primary school, I went to just a public – I was a Catholic school – um, and I had to uh, do all the Catholic stuff like um, church every week and yes. stuff like that, and that just wasn't for me. And then went to a grammar – mine actually got a grammar school when I was about grade five, a massive new school in town. It was like the bee's knees. So <laughs> got in there, went in, went in the year six. So shirt, tie, Yeah, all shirt, that. Yeah, yeah, all that, and I was like, I'm yeah. not ready for this. <laughs> and I've gone there, and um, it was good. I, like the boys there were awesome, and like it was um, – Multi-sex school, so it was um, like awesome school. But um, just being a grammar, it was like oh, it's all education. They, they didn't really care about sport. There was a couple of teachers that pushed me to get as much as I could out of footy, but um, most of the other ones were just all about education and um, getting to uni and stuff like that. And I got to year 10 and you do two weeks of work experience in year 10 and I was like, oh, well, I wouldn't mind trying being a sparky or being a plumber. Um, and then a couple of guys at the footy club, they had a plumbing business and they're like, oh, um, do you want to come do two weeks work experience with us? I said, yeah, sure. Did two weeks and at the end of it, they're like, do you want a job? I said, yes, get me out of here. <laughs> Mum was devastated and I was like, had to talk her into it and she goes, well, you, look, probably right in two years' time, you'll finish year 12, you'll decide you don't want to go to uni and then you'll do it, do it anyway. Mm-hmm. So I started in year 10, at the end of year 10 and then by the time all my mates called me stupid as well and then... Two years later, year 12 finished. They're all starting their apprenticeships. So I'm halfway through mine and then... Probably got a new car. <laughs> yeah, so. brand new car. I've yeah. bought my own car. They've, <laughs> they've scraped off their fans for their money. But um, What was it? What was your first car? We asked this on the back of Fleet Network, partnering with the podcast. Um, what was your first car? 2012... We're at a Hilux. <laughs> so it was, yeah. That's not Six, a... <laughs> 16, 17 year old rolling on yeah. the Hilux. <laughs> Everyone know. else has got like galant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was still living at home. I was 15 and like mum was still giving me 10 bucks cash for, for lunch every day. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just saving it all up. And then <laughs> saving for the car. I found this ute and I'm like, this is it. So I put everything I had towards it and um, literally got rid of it. I still had it when I came, got rid of it last year, bought my first car since then. So wow. Unreal. Yeah, but um, yeah, 
got into plumbing and then it was just it worked out perfectly with, with like how footy went as well because plumbing's a four-year apprenticeship so I missed out on two drafts before I got drafted um so I fi- literally finished my apprenticeship and then three months later got drafted really so I come over here with like something to fall back on instantly yep um obviously got in the national draft so you get two years on top of that and then it was just like well fuck yeah. How good is this? So, yeah. so, do, so do you reckon, like, do you reckon that went together though? Like, missing out on those those drafts. Like, did you want to be drafted as an eighteen year old, or do you, do you feel like looking back because you were in the middle of a pre- apprenticeship and you almost committed to doing that as well? You, yeah, do you feel like they go together. Do you um, know? to an extent, I think leaving school at such a young age makes you grow up a lot quicker. So you start. Like, oh, when I was 16, I was using fake IDs to go into nightclubs and stuff like that. So you're, like, yes. growing up a lot quicker and you're just hanging out with all the boys and stuff like that. Did and you look 18 as a 16-year-old? Oh, kid? God, no. <laughs> God, no. I, some of the fake IDs, I, just, I don't know how I get away with it. Um, I finally got found out about six months because the Chuka's not a big town. I was going to say, what nightclubs are we rolling in into a yeah. Chuka? Some of the best. <laughs> oh, Rival great. hippie club. <laughs> um, so so what happened? Six months? Yeah, what? so six months ago I got found out and then obviously where it gets around quick. So I was just... <laughs> Always trying to get in there before the bouncers would get on the door. So I'd go in, all my mates would go to like the pub for freeze or whatever, and I'd stroll down to the to the clubs at six o'clock, <laughs> sitting there by myself, have a spin on the pokies or whatever, and then <laughs> wait for all my mates to rock up later. And <laughs> so yeah, but then sort of got to eighteen, and I, I just wasn't ready. I was immature. I wasn't. I, w- I didn't care enough. I, I wanted to play AFL, but I didn't try. And I played under eighteens, tack cup. Yeah. Um, and we just got smoked every game playing for Bendigo. We, I think we won two games for the year and the rest we lost by over 100 points. So right. it was a tough year and with a couple of games to go, I knew I wasn't going to get drafted. And I said, well, my, my, my local club, the seniors are playing finals. I'll go back there. Went back, played finals, had a really good final series with them. So it's not a great league, so it was you can't take much out of it. And then from that, I got a little bit of interest in the VFL, um, probably coming out eight, under 18s as well. And then... Williamstown won the flag that year in the VFL and, and they wanted me to come have a go. So I said, oh, perfect. So I'm going to a good club here. Who are Williamstown aligned with? Are they with they the club were with, or a standalone? They were, yeah, the, a couple of years before I got there, they were with Collingwood. Yeah. And then they were with Western Bulldogs as well. Because Collingwood had their own footy yeah. club. So you walk into a club that's off the back of a premiership. Yeah. So is that and what? I, yeah. So I've walked straight in there as a 17-year-old kid and I was like, this is what it takes to be like professional footballers because these guys are – 26, 27, built like AFL players ready to go. Like these guys are genuine. I, I can make a case for them why they should have played AFL. Yes. Um, and and then so that being around the – again, being a young bloke around older blokes like that just made me grow up a lot more quicker again. And then sort of that first year I was in and out of the ones, um, which I was pretty happy with just because of where the team was at. We made the finals again. Um, made the prelim, I played in that prelim, lost it. Um, and then next year I came back and played every game, um, p- lost another prelim. Third year, played every game, lost another prelim. So wow. had three pretty successful years at Willie. And then after that, I was like, in those three years, I reckon I developed probably six years, you know, like from where I was as an 18-year-old to where I was at 20. I was well, 17 to 20, I was like, well, now I know what it takes and now I'm ready to play AFL and now I want to try. Did you have to move to Melbourne to go and play? Like yeah, to- so I had to yeah. – I quit my job in Echuca. Um, uh, I was a second year, so I was just finished my second year of plumbing. Quit my job. Had a mate in Echuca that has a plumbing business in Melbourne and he said, you can come – if you're going to come chase a dream, you can come work for us. And I said, yeah, for sure. Um, sort of all rushed – it all went ahead pretty quickly and I had nowhere to live and he had a factory in North Sunshine, which is like a scummy part of Melbourne. Oh, no, it's oh, oh. And um, <laughs> if you want to go find stolen cars or whatever, they're probably in the <laughs> factories around there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, then we went, yeah, so I moved down there and he had, he had a little apartment building in the factory. So it was like the work factory, there's trucks and excavators and everything inside the shed and I'm just living in there with them all. And <laughs> really? He would come down and stay a few nights a week and stuff. So it was like a well-set-out little um, unit. 
before a 17 year old first time out of home, I'd live in Sunshine <laughs> Commercial District. <laughs> just got me licensed. I was like, what am I doing? I was like, <laughs> starting to question myself. Like, what am I doing here? I'm mean, stuck in Melbourne. And I've just like, just jumped to this without even thinking about like where I'm going. And then I just stuck it out. I had a lot of support around me, which God knows where I'd be if I didn't. Um, and stuck it out for that first year. After a few months, a couple of other Bendigo boys ended up playing for Willie, coming to Willie. Oh, one went to Willie, one went to Collingwood. Um, so we got a house together. And then from there, it was just, yeah, I was set and growing up. Growing up, yeah. I was just thrown into the deep end if sink or swim sort of set up. So were you, were you looking after yourself, like physically and, and eating well at that point? Because we had, um, who, who was it? Oh, David Rapunda said he got moved into a house when he was 17, had no clue what he was doing. Seeing two minute home. noodles every night. Seeing two minute noodles. Yeah, I was, you toast. know those. You know those little frozen meals you get at like yeah, like the um, light and easy. Yeah, the light and easy. I was just living off them, <laughs> and I was so on like um, Thursday nights we'd um, get fed at, at the footy club, and I'd just sit there and I'd just like scrape up all the leftovers. And like, yeah, this is gonna do me for the weekend. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, like a, you know you laugh about it now, but it's, looking back on it, those two years, 18, 19 year old playing for a VFL side, effectively living, at, you know, moving out of the country house. You've living got an apprenticeship, factory. but like. Yeah, do you do you, uh, is it is it positive? Do you look back on it positively? Like, did you learn a lot? Hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the time, it was so tough and so hard. Like, mentally, physically, it was just ridiculous. I'd get get home and just sleep for hours. On Wednesday nights is my only night off, and I'd get home at like four, knock off at four, get home, go to sleep, and wake up the next day. I wouldn't even eat dinner or nothing. I was just <laughs> exhausted. Fat chat. But yeah, um. Shedding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep but I, um, down. Don't eat yeah, that's it. <laughs> but like looking back on it, it's just made everything else in life so much easier. Like the transition from coming over to Perth, where I, a city I've never I'd never been to before I got drafted, ne- didn't know anyone over here um, except for Brett Bewley, who was coming over with me from Williamstown, and that made it a hell of a lot easier as well. But um, just that transition was just I just was, went seamlessly because. I'd done it, I felt like I'd done it all before almost, um, but I'd done it as a 17-year-old, whereas now I was 20, 10 and 21. Mm. So I felt like I'd grown up maybe five or six years already. I felt like I was a 25-year-old sort of set up. Um, and then, yeah, come, and then for that first year, I sort of went through the same stuff I went through at Williamstown, in and out of the senior team. And um, But I was better prepared. I, I wouldn't say it was easy, but I was prepared for it and I, was, I knew how to handle it as well. Mm. just because I'd done it all before. So I think, yeah, looking back on it, I don't regret any of the decisions I made with, with leaving, leaving school early, um, moving to Melbourne as a 17-year-old and living in a factory in North Sunshine. I don't regret any of it. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but I don't, I don't regret it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you're a mature age draft pick in, in, as a 20-year-old. So what's it like missing out on draft day um, as a 17, 18-year-old? you know, watching the draft from home or listening on radio or are you doing those things? Do you care enough? Or did you – was yeah. it disappointing? Yeah, it was. I um, Yeah, the first year I wasn't expecting anything. As I said, I left the attack hub on the 18 side, Bendigo, with a couple of games to go to go play for Miami just because I knew I wasn't going to get picked up. And as a team, we hadn't achieved enough. They were going to pick – I think we had two get drafted that year. One was Tommy Cole. Um – uh, and they're not going to pick up anyone else purely because it's a, we were a shit side. We, we weren't winning games. You can't pick up. Like in Oakley Chargers, they get 10 when they win a flag or whatever it is. So yes. two's, two's lucky, I'd say, in a team that's won two years for the game, uh, two games for the year. Um, so that first year, I just watched it purely to, to get around like guys like Tommy Cole, Aiden Johnson, these guys that got drafted I was playing with. Um, Clayton Oliver, who's one of my best mates growing up. So... Um, then the next year after playing VFL, I sort of had a bit more interest. Um, and I thought, oh, there's a slight chance here. Clubs are asking about me. I still didn't have a manager. I, still, I wasn't sort of hundred percent like at it, yeah. you know, like I'm going to get drafted here. I'm going to try as hard as I can. I was just trying to find my feet at VFL level at that stage. So sitting through that, I was like, oh, I don't know, you hear funny stories about guys getting picked up when they don't expect it. Hopefully that's me. But So I watched it in, in with like my fingers crossed and that and then nothing. And I wasn't too disappointed. I just said, oh, I'll just go back to it and do it again next year. I'm still 19. Like, yeah. I don't care. And then that next year had a lot more interest. 
spoke to a couple of clubs, had my hopes up, had all my mates come down to Melbourne from Echuca, um, and we watched the draft, had a few beers watching the draft. And it was like, well, if I get picked up, I'm probably going to go rookie at that stage just because I hadn't didn't know enough. Yeah. Um, but the same time, like I had more mates there, and I was like, well, let's just enjoy it. And if I don't, we got great grapevine gathering tomorrow anyway, so if we don't get drafted, <laughs> then at least we can go to that still and have get on the piss or whatever. And we um, and I didn't get drafted, so I was disappointed. But I had all my mates around, and it just made it better. And then probably the few months after that, I went. Oh, fuck this is it like next year it's make it or break it no one it's hard to get drafted as mature age as it is but each year that you get older then no the less and less people want you yeah so that next year i just was like yeah i'm doing everything i can i actually put in a off season where i like try as hard as i could to get fit and strong and did a lot of running and um moved into brunswick with, with my best mate and um just yeah put my head right down and, and just got, tried to get on top of everything mentally physically um and and try and put all my energy towards making AFL and my boss probably probably saw it at work or probably started putting work behind me a lot and um but he was all for me as well like he loved me playing AFL and I'm still close as with him and and he still comes over and supports me and stuff like that so oh, he was cool. I was lucky enough that I, I had to say did he sack you no <laughs> he probably wanted to <laughs> it's probably days where I rang up on a Monday I'm like mate I'm that sore I'm not coming in <laughs> So he, he looked. Oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. So he looked after you a bit. And that's what I mean with all that support stuff. Like right. I just had so much support. Like my boss, he's trying to run a business and he's paying me a full time plumbing wage. There's days I'm just not rocking up because I'm too sore. Like, he, yeah, he was un- unbelievable for me getting there. And then that, yeah. So that last year at, at VFL, I really had that mindset. Like it's this year or never. If you, if you don't get picked up this year, then. I probably I didn't like looking back on it, I was probably gonna quit VFL and just go back and enjoy footy, playing with my mates and stuff like that and just be a normal kid. Yeah. Um and then yeah, got lucky enough to have a really good year, got into the finals and had a really good final series. And I think that sort of put me above the rest of the group um in terms of getting picked up and um and then yeah, I was lucky enough. Oh, actually Dave uh, Dave Walls, he um he, he's a list manager at Freo. He rang me up one day when I was at work and he goes, mate, we've got a we've got a um, fitness testing day for Freo um, in a couple of weeks. You, I'd like you to come do it. Right. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fitness testing. <laughs> and that weekend we were going to Bali for the Williamstown <laughs> footy trip. <laughs> what did you do? I was like, mate, I don't know if I can do it. Like I don't want to do it. And I just – and I just – because I was just so nervous and I just like fitness testing, I hate it more than anything. Yes. I was like, nah, I'm not doing it. I said, nah, sorry, mate, I'm not doing it. So I went to Bali. <laughs> Jesus. So that's unreal. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> went to Bali on the footy trip, three days on the piss, and then come back on the Monday and he rings me again. He's like, mate, really, really want you to do it. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? I'm fucked. Like, I'm so exhausted. Uh, what, from day was the foot, what day was the testing? Like on a Tuesday or something? Saturday. So, so or Friday. So it was Friday. I got back on the Tuesday morning. So I had three days to prepare for this fitness test. <laughs> what did you do? Just sleep? <laughs> Slept for the first two days and then <laughs> went for like a 3K jog around Princess Park on the Thursday <laughs> to see where I was at. And I was like, oh, I'm nowhere. This is going to be horrid. And then I got there and he was like, doing my skinnies and stuff and, and he'd come over and like when the lady was doing my skinnies because Ross was the coach and he's big on skinnies and yes. stuff like that and height. For some reason, Ross was really big on height. Yes. She, she measured me, I was 178. Bulls, he goes, put him, put him up to 180. <laughs> I was like, all right. Skinnies were like 50 something and oh, 49 or something she, and he Bulls, he's like, yeah, just put him down as like 42 or something. 49 is quite good, Dan, by the way, if you're wondering. Right, I have no idea. So she's so he, he's, she's dropped you from 49 to like. Yeah, he's so he, I'm like, oh, this guy is this guy's a legend. Like, <laughs> why why did he really like? Obviously, he really wanted you there. I think he wanted me, but maybe he had to had a bit of convincing to do with others. Maybe right. I don't know. And then I did the fitness testing, and like, to be fair, my vertical jump, my agility testing, my sprint testing was all good. Good. When it got to the beat test, I was the first to pull out. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I got like an 11-3 or something. I was like, oh no! Bum and then belly. he comes up to me afterwards. He goes, mate. What's wrong with your fitness? And I'm like, mate, I just got back from a three-day footy trip in Bali. 
<laughs> and he goes, at least you're honest with me and this fitness is something we can fix. Yes. So I was like, oh, sweet. And then I went away from that going, well, I've blown my chances with Freo. I'm not going to Freo. <laughs> yeah. Got to draft day. Wolsey messaged me on the morning. He's like, good luck, mate. All the best. So I'm like, well, probably that means he's not picking me up. Someone else might. Yes. Um, so I had like a few clubs I'd already talked to and I was, I was half confident, like maybe I'll go in the rookie draft or whatever, or late, late in the national. And then it was like, I was just working and I was down, I was working with an apprentice and we're down in, um, we were at this, like in Hawthorne, this massive, it was like this huge multi-million dollar house that someone's just like underground car park, like the size of my house <laughs> with like a golf simulator and everything. Wow. So I got a pool on the wall, like it's all glass underneath so you can just watch the whole swimming pool and stuff. Wow. It was unbelievable. I was down there, there's no phone reception and I'm down there and I knew the draft was on and I was like, I'll check it every time I come out of the garage like because I was underground. So I'll check it every time I go out and then I walk out and I've got like 10 missed calls. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? And then my boss calls me. I'm like, hey, mate. And he's like, you fucking legend. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you've been drafted. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Who too? He's like, Freo. I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> it was that fucked. And then, um, and then, yeah, so then Ross called me and Wolsey called me and they're like, mate, we just love you and stuff like that. And then two, two picks later, Brett Billy went and I was like, this is so good. Like, now I've got a mate going over with me. He's going to make the transaction. Or the so Bules was playing at Williamstown with you as well? Yeah. He was so they picked, they picked blokes back to back from Willie. Back to back, two wow. picks apart. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the pick in between that was another VFL bloke and he went to that Melbourne. That never happens. Never happens. Genuinely never happens. Nah. Even yeah. if Williamstown had two blokes drafted in the same draft, you wouldn't be going to the same team. Nah, no way. two picks after each other. We ended up having four go that draft. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So that's um, how you got to Freo. That's how I got it, yeah. You know that you're one of only four players in the history of Ross Lyon. Yep. Is this correct? Or just at Freo or St Kilda uh, when, as well? When, Bud, when he debuted, yep. St Kilda and Freo, at the point of you debuted, you're only one of four players that he's played on debut in, in the history in of his one, coaching. Round one. round one, debut, yeah. your yeah, debut right. round one, you're only one of four players. You, yep. Andy Brayshaw. Brayshaw, um, oh, Banfield, yeah. Um, uh, Hang Doesn't on, tell us any St Kilda players, so I you need to check your stats. That's one from 2007. Okay. That's one from 2007, yeah. Okay, very good. So he must have rated Thanks, you. Ross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he must have rated you. What's he like as a coach? Yeah, he's good. What you see with Ross is what you get. Yeah. Um, like, coaching-wise, he's as smart as anyone you, like, you'll like you ever see. Like, he's just – the way he reads the game and puts it all together in his head, you can see him, You can see his brain working over time at times. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I only had one year with him. I didn't have much to do with him. Um, yeah. I was in and out of it, so I was a little bit shitty with him at times. And um, so yeah, just we went our own ways, and I haven't spoken to him since. But are you, are you that sort of player? Are you that sort of um, you know competitive? Gets gets not dirty, but you know like yeah. The, I, I use this word competitive. Like do you hate it when you know it doesn't go your way. And yeah, I mean, I'm, in a bad I'm emotional. Way. I'm yeah. emotional. I'm passionate. Yeah. Um, I think to an extent that's what's got me so far in footy. Mm. Just I'll never leave anything unturned and I'll always be pissed off if I don't get the best out of a situation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, probably – and being immature at 20 years old and stuff, like I thought I was mature, but um, you're still learning all those sort of things and you get – when you get like told you're not good enough or told you've got to work on something and you're a little bit stubborn, it's like, well – all right, I'll just prove you wrong then. You know what I mean? Like, and then you prove him wrong, and, and it's like, well, told you. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Ah, oh, that's the, so the way, metaphor to my career. 2008, uh, Jaron Geary. Jaron Geary. Don't, uh, don't shrug your shoulders. 2018, Jaron Bailey, Geary. Bailey Banfield, Andrew Brayshaw, Lockie Schultz. That's the four people who have debuted in round one. That's a good club. Got to be it's honest. A great club. It's very good. Um, so you're on a list, Fremantle. Um, and we'll, and we'll speak about footy a bit, but I want to start on plumbing and, and that side of you. So you come into the footy club and that still becomes like, you can sort of keep that going, right? Like, did, weren't, you, weren't you doing work at blokes' houses around? Yeah, I still do today. <laughs> I just like, I, to an extent, I like it. I like, like I do, I love plumbing. Like, I think that's why I want to, when I finish, I'm going to run my own business just so I can pick and choose what I do because there's so much shit that goes with it. But yes, it's also, there's a lot of good stuff as well. Yes. 
Um, so when guys come to me and they've got a problem, if I don't like, if I if I if I don't like the job, I'll just say, oh, I don't have the tools for it. Sorry. <laughs> but you do have the yeah. tools for it. <laughs> so have you got like a tool, you got tools over here? Yeah, I got all my tools board over. Yeah. Um, Unreal. So yeah, I um. Like how often do you get hit up by guys on the team? Oh, in season, not often. Right. In the off season, a little bit more probably. In, like, in the off season, he's running a renovation every company. Few days. <laughs> it's, no, it'd be like once a month, but it's the jobs are maybe a day or two. So. Oh really? Yeah. Um. But I, I like it, and and it's good to just in the off season you go around, you have a few beers while you do it, and just like. Who's the tight ass? Are they paying you? Hopefully they're paying you. Yeah, they'll oh, pay. Yes. They'll pay. Actually, my first year. <laughs> One of the physios, he's not there anymore. I don't know if I should say it, but he probably wouldn't. R- remain probably, nameless. Yeah, I'll remain like, nameless. He um, he goes, oh, your kitchen sink's stuffed up. The tap's not working. Do you reckon you can come and fix it? And I'm like, mate, just go buy a new one and I'll just reinstall the whole sink for you. And then so he's gone and bought, he's bought everything, the complete new sink, everything. So I've gone and put in a sink, put in the taps, everything. And then at the end of it, it was like one of the first jobs I did, and I was like, I don't, I don't know how to say, yeah, mate. That that just took me a Pay day. Up, Can yeah. I have some money? <laughs> 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 That's me day off gone because this was in season as well. And then he's like, uh, I suppose I should give you something. And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so no shit. Opens the fridge and pulls out a pack of a six pack of. Alcohol-free ginger beer. Oh, my God. And I go, I go, <laughs> save it. Just save it. And <laughs> just turn around and walk down. <laughs> was it like an alcoholic ginger beer that's alcohol-free or was it like Bundaberg? That was Bundaberg. Beer? It was a Bundaberg one. <laughs> and it was like... I think they come in four packs as well. Yeah, by the looks of it, they hadn't been drank for months and it was just like... <laughs> he just had, had them sitting there. He's like, I've got to give him something. Uh, cheers. Thanks so much for having me around yeah. to fix your shit. No, I'll just go and sit in peak hour traffic for two hours to get home. <laughs> <laughs> what are their players? Any of the boys? Like, who's, who's getting you get work? Done in the house. So you've done full full renos of any of the boys? No, nah, I haven't done full renos. That's I've good. done um, I've, I go and fix like leaking showers or hot water issues or leaking pipes. Um, Sean Darcy moved into a new house that was being renovated and had no bathroom, so he had no shower and he was living there for like two months. And, he, I was, and he's like, "Mate, I need a shower." So I went in there, and dug up his backyard, and put in an outdoor shower on the wall for him. So unreal um, <laughs> stuff like that, just little jobs, but like. They're a little bit like niche you know, just sort of s- stuff that you get, you get a plumber to come and do it. They're going to charge you an arm and a leg, but <laughs> a, little, on, a little birdie told me that on an away trip, you walked in and your, your shower, your hotel room was broken. <laughs> so you went to Bunnings, bought a screwdriver and fixed it. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit more than a screwdriver. I had to redo the whole shower. But <laughs> what do you mean? It was a hotel. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a hub. It was a hub. Right. And, um, and I'd been there, like we got there the night before late. And then so I'd unpacked all my stuff everywhere, set up my PlayStation and the TV, everything. Yes. Next like morning, every AFL player in the priorities, history. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it was a real setup. <laughs> and then real next setup. morning I um I went to have a shower and like the shower head was just like snapped off. I was like, this is ridiculous. It was like, how I'm like, how did they not see this when they were cleaning the room? Yes. I'm like Probably didn't clean the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, well, if I get, go down to recession, this bloke's going to probably come this hour. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have no shower this morning. So I just quickly chucked on some clothes, ran down to Bunnies, which was not far, bought a couple of tools and then just went back up there and did it myself. <laughs> that is Hopefully outrageous. gave him a receipt. <laughs> so I, should have. Shower for you. I, bought, I bought the tools home with me, so I got that out of it. <laughs> that is outrageous. At your house, do you just have like really good taps and stuff? Like epic faucets and drains. <laughs> no, the plumber's house is always the worst. Yeah. Because really? they just No, who's plumbing the plumbers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just, we, you can't be bothered when you get home, you know. You switch off and you're just like, I need to do that. I'll get around to it. You just don't. I want one of those, um, you know, in America they have the the friggin', what's it called, where it like crushes up all the, the shit in the sink. Oh, the, but he's saying he doesn't work in season. He's not going to come in and install a grind sink food grinder. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, well, like it's like, yeah, grind, like we don't yeah. have it in Australia. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, no, we've got them. I've, I've done a fair few of them. Dream House is going to have one of I'll those. I'll get him to give you his details <laughs> yeah. after, Dan. Just a four-pack of Bundaberg. <laughs> <laughs> what a business that. model. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into footy a bit there, mate. So you get onto an AFL list. and what? Do you remember your first game? So it was, it was round one of the first yeah, year there. Yeah, I do, yeah. It was... um. Couldn't have had it better. I came in. I didn't play any preseason games. I was supposed to 
We had two JLT games that year. Um, first one, I was... So this is 2019. 2019. Yep. First one, I think we played Carlton. I didn't play. Um, there was a couple of small forwards ahead of me. I think Switter, Brandon Matera, Hayden Ballantyne. So Switter did his hammy in that game. He was out for a month. Next week, um, we played uh, you guys, West Coast, um, <clears throat> down at Mandra and... Um, they said, I'll oh, play half in the twos beforehand and then play half in the ones afterwards. Right. So I was playing twos in the, for in Peel. the game for Peel in, in the game beforehand and got a massive corky. So I was like, no. Oh. And I was fuming. I was like, this is my chance to play round one, like get in there and prove myself. And then got a massive corky and couldn't play the game. And I was fuming. I was like, why the fuck did you just make me play that <laughs> yes. game? Yes. And, um, and then in that game, Brandon Matera punched someone, got reported. So we literally were going into round one with no small four. We had Hayden Ballantyne and there was no one else. And then I was like, I'm actually a sneaky Run, chance yeah. here. Just to Off the back of a corky. <laughs> two quarters Stephen in the resis. Bradbury. <laughs> <laughs> two quarters in the resis <laughs> and a corky and straight in. And they put me straight in. I was like, this is unbelievable. And we played North Melbourne at home um, and, um, yeah, went out there and was like, this is this is so good. How good is this stadium? How good is this atmosphere? This is like AFL. Yes. One by 81 points. And I was like, this is so good. How easy is this? <laughs> Next week we got – You kicked two. I kicked two, yeah. Um, so I was like, I'll keep me spot at least because I think Brandon Matera was coming back from suspension that week um, and Switter was the week after with a hammy. So I'm like, I've got to do everything right to, to keep my spot here. So I kept my spot after round one. Round two went up to Gold Coast who – Back in, what, 2019, I don't think they'd, they might have finished last the two years before that, won one or two games for the season. We lost by a point. Ugh. So I've gone from beating North by 80 then to losing to Gold Coast by a wow. point. Like, I was just going, this has gone from the best thing ever to the worst <laughs> thing ever. And then I, I wouldn't say I had a bad game. I think I had like 12 or 13 touches and a couple behinds. If I kick straight, maybe I would have held my spot, I don't know. And then I just got dropped. Yes. Missed the next week against Saints. We won, and then he still. And then for the Derby in round four, he brought me back in. So he's. I think he dropped someone. Might drop banners or something, and brought me back in. I was like, oh, that's like a good sign of like where I'm where I'm going and where I'm at, and like I get dropped, but I get even after a win, he's willing to bring bring me back in for someone. And then um, had an absolute mare of a day, like. <laughs> I think I had seven touches, kicked one behind and just couldn't get anywhere near. I remember running to the bench and Ross is on the phone. You could see spit coming out the end of the phone because he's yelling at me that <laughs> what loud. What was he saying? He was just like, mate, you're, this standard of footy isn't even good enough for Waffle. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Just like, what you want to hear on the your phone. Your decision making has been nowhere. What did Brad Hill just say to you? And I'm like, oh, he just said, kick it quicker because I held on to it for a bit longer. He's like, a bit long, a bit long. I'm like, fuck, too long. Sorry, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, and then I got dropped and I, he must have just put a line through my name because I didn't play for another 10 weeks after that I was just like bang straight back to Waffle no matter how good I played at Waffle it was just like not coming back in Right? did you keep thinking you'd like surely this week come yeah, back yeah 100% I was just like I've had a great 20 disposals and a few goals playing Waffle like and then you bring someone else in and I'm like oh this isn't going good like this is this is getting ugly then at the end of the year he sort of when he got sacked I was like, oh, this could be a turning point for me. This could like work in my favour, and it ended up it did. JL came in, worked really closely with him from day one, and um, sort of had a re like just refreshed my whole career. Even though I was so young, I I needed it. I was sort of becoming so stale with myself and stale with my footy and where it was going, and lost a lot of motivation as well. And then JL came in. Set me up with Neil McLean, the sports psych that was over at the Eagles. Yep. He brought him over and um, and just got me into a really new head, like perfect headspace for it all until I take that year. And then, yeah, haven't missed a game since. So, what, what sort of stuff have you done with Neil? I've done a bit of work with Neil. He's a sports psych, Daniel, and listeners. What sort of stuff do you do with him and how yeah. has he helped change your mind? Yeah, so at the start, it was about confidence. He, he saw it. The way Neil rephrased to me was refrained to me. I don't know what you say, but um, he said I was like a, I was like a uh, a dog at the pound that had been treated badly by its past owner. So I was real timid and real scared, and 
had no confidence, didn't know where I was at. And then when the new owner came in, I was just so afraid to make mistakes and get back in that position. Right. With so the jail. old owner being Ross, new yeah. owner being Jail. And, um, and you're still that dog in the pound. And I was the dog in the pound <laughs> that was just timid and scared. And, right. And, um, and so it was just about building confidence back in myself and in my kicking because I just was afraid to kick the ball, probably because of that spray I got against West Coast. I don't know. I still hold on to it. I was going to so say, you know exactly you what I was saying. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then so, yeah, that first year it was just about getting confidence back in myself and just believing that I, I'm good enough to play AFL level and and I can make myself a career out of it for myself and um, play as, as many games as I put my mind to. And and then from there it's just been building on top of that and just being building into the best player I can possibly be for the team if, and to get as much out of myself that I can as well. And um, being able to move on probably lately, it's put more about being move on, move, being able to move on from – poor performances or even good performances and not just be stuck in stuck in a headspace where you're just like, fuck, I'm in bad form this weekend. I'm going to be in more bad form. Like I just can't get out of this form slump or I've had a good game. It's just going to happen again. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, he, yeah just being able to keep like a level-headed, just really nice baseline um, has probably been the biggest part of, of me that he's changed. And I think um, – just my consistency over the last couple of years is improving and I've probably put it down to that. So <clears throat> your your role in the team is pretty, you know, from afar, I don't know what happens inside the four walls of Frio, but it's pretty easily identified watching on, you know, a small pressure forward, don't spend a great deal of time in the midfield. It's sort of like backman. Not many kids like grow up wanting to be a backman, although I'd like to see more of them doing that, Dan. <laughs> but small pressure forward, I don't think there's that many kids that are that. You know, even Ballers, people look at Hayden Ballantyne. He was a, he was a pure midfielder. In, yeah. In, well, he was Sandover medalist. Were you a midfielder, like, yeah. come, coming through? And then how have, how's that change been to, like, a real role-driven player? Um, I think just – well, growing up, I was a midfielder, yeah. Um, but growing up, you don't go off. So you, you're midfielder and then when, you, when you'd go off, you rest forward. So I was a small forward when I was resting and it was just like a goal kick and having a rest. Yes. So I probably created like a natural forward craft from that, just yeah. became a natural forward. Um, but I was still always a midfielder. Under 18s, I was a wingman um, and I hated it. I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not an outside player. I, I'm, I'm not like, I can't run for that far at that high speed for long enough to, to be out. I'm more of a short, sharp burst kind of guy. Yes. Um, and then when I got to Williamstown, I was like, well, this, where, as I said, we've won, well, they've won a premiership the year before. I'm not going to get into this midfield. It's unbelievable. It's one of the best midfields in in state league level in the country. Um, so there's no way I'm going to get into the midfield. And then there was spots in the in the forward line. I thought if I'm going to get into this team, it's going to be as a small forward. And I had that natural craft already. So I just put all put all my like eggs in that basket and said I'm going to be a small forward and work on being a small forward and work with the forward coaches there and improve my craft and improve my was that fly? <laughs> Got him. Did better than Pierce. He <laughs> was living in Pierce's eye with him. So. <laughs> Didn't blink. Um, and then, yeah, so I just um, developed that forward role at um, Williamstown and just put – just did, what, three years there as, as being a, a permanent forward and did a little bit in the midfield there when – when one of the mids would come yeah. forward and do a bit few flips and stuff, but I was I was predominantly a a forward, and then um, I think yeah, getting into the AFL, I, I showed that I had the defensive side in VFL. I probably was more of a goal kicking forward, um, more of an attacking minded forward, um, but I did have a defensive side as well, and then um, so I came came to Frio, and um, I knew that how I valued the role of being a pressure forward was in is, is becoming in the AFL and um, it's sort of a newish role. Like you don't it's it's hasn't been around for a long time because the way the game's game used to be played it was all attacking and it was one on one defence and stuff like that. So at Freo it was valued. I mean like Ross Lyon built those grand final years on pressure forwards. Hundred percent, right? yeah. So I knew I knew coming into the team and I knew with Ballers going out that yeah. If I, this is a role that I'm gonna be able to take, it's gonna be Ballers. Yeah. Um so I just try. I just tried to stick to him as close as I can, and, and guys like him and Sonny, because I knew with Sonny I could get the natural forward, just that craft and just the the knowledge he has is just like 
unbelievable. So I knew if I could learn some off him and then learn what Ballas knows about just being that mongrel forward, then it's going to hold me. I've, I'm surrounded by two of the best best guys that in the business. So I just um, – I was like a sponge to him. I just learned as much as I possibly could. I only had one year with Ballas, but I just – everything he did, I just was just – admire it and just learn from it and um and then I suppose at the end of that first year I was like well I think that pressure forward is is what my strengths really are now because just because of the effort I can put in when I'm def- on defense and stuff like that and I know that if you have a good enough in defensive intent then the rewards coming back the other way in, in attack are gonna they're gonna fall into your favor anyway so Going into the games, I just have a really defensive mindset and um, I know that if there's one thing I control, it's my pressure. I can't control how many times I get the ball, what I do with it when I've got it because it's so unpredictable. But if I can control one thing, I know that I'm always going to be able to put pressure on and um, and that's sort of one thing Ballas taught me, just just be a prick and, and the ball will bounce your way. Like I don't know if you believe in the footy gods, but I certainly do and I feel like um, if yes. you do the hard yards on the field, then the favours will fall your way. And um, and that's just the motto I sort of go by. The footy gods. I haven't heard that for a mm. while. Adrian Hickmott, my favourite coach of all time, <laughs> spoke about the footy gods. Just do the right thing and it'll just fall your way. Fans would see – I think fans of Freo see you as a Hayden Ballantyne type, just less of a pest. Like and I say that with all love. Um, played a lot of footy with Ballers. Love him as a bloke. But – you have the defensive nature, the pressure, the 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 the, the pissed off emotional side, but you just seem like less of a pest. Is that fair? I think or are you so. still a pest? Um, <laughs> I've never played against you. We had a look. I'd never played against you. Yeah. So I wouldn't be able to well, tell you. I was like a fan of West Coast and like what like Ballas playing against your team. You're always like Oh, fuck Hayden Ballantyne. Everyone hates Ballers. You're yeah, a West Coast fan. No you, one you hates. You play a similar role, but I'm not like, oh, fuck Lucky Schultz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to lift your game a little bit. Oh, no, mate. Yeah. Well, you still dominate. It's more just like, <laughs> it's just more about the like, I don't know why I don't like that guy, but I do Well, it's like interesting him. you said about uh, Ballantyne and Walters, right? It, in my mind, when you're speaking about that, you've got characteristics of Ballantyne, but you've left a few apart uh, and you've kind of taken the Walters side a little bit like, like Mickey Walters looks like a little bit more of a calm character than Ballas out there, whereas Ballas is just trying to, you know, get someone around. Yeah, that's fine. That's how he used to do it. Is that fair? You sort of took the, tried to take the best of both of them? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah, they've got completely different mindsets going into the game. Sonny gets as fired up as anyone I know, but it's more himself and it's more to to sort of raz himself up and mm. get himself up and about, whereas Ballas was like, I'm just going to smash as many blokes as I can and bring as many blokes along with, for the ride as I can. Yes. Um, and, yeah, so I, I have that mindset in trying to smash blokes and, and just make as much of a contest and make it as hard, life as hard as I can for the other opposition defenders. Um, but I just because, – probably because I'm so mentally fragile myself that I know if I try and get in their heads, they're going to get in mine twice as bad. <laughs> <laughs> Great, you're having a laugh about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to find that balance still. I'd still like to get a bit more mongrel out of me. and um, Don't have to be anyone else but yourself, mate. Try and piss off a few players that are sort of doing a bit to us and hurting us, but... Um, Just aim for the fans like Dan. Piss Dan off and then you know you're going all right. <laughs> um, so, you know, p- playing that style of footy, uh, is it... Is it taxing on your body? I mean, we're doing this interview during the week after the Hawthorne game. Not sure when we'll air this, but I was calling that game with Fox Footy and I was watching you and you were cooked, mate. Like, I, I don't really – like, just in case whatever happens with you, it doesn't have to speak specifically about the injury, but you were cooked, mate. Your arm was, like, hanging on the side. <laughs> you got battered. That went half time. I'm assuming you had a bit of a tension half time. You come back out. Literally the first contest you're in, you smashed your arm again. You're rolling around the ground. I'm on Fox Field. I go, well, boys, uh, just an update. Logan Schultz will be subbed out of the game. He can't even get off the ground. Like, he's done, dusted. Next minute, I'm rolling around. Sub gets made. Fifey standing applause. Yeah. Right? None of us have ever had one of those, but Fifey does. <laughs> For sub. And shoulders just out there running around. Like, like, is it is it taxing on your body? Do you feel like you need to play through things like that? Uh, yeah. I, I'd hate to miss out on any footy. Like, I just – probably because of 
where I've come from and the journey I've had to take to get to AFL, I just know that if I'm physically okay to play AFL, I'm going to play as much as I possibly can just because I feel like I've I missed a few years already and um, and I know looking back on it, like it's my dream. So I know that I just want to play as much as I possibly can. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's pretty hard trying to get me off the field if there was a few times on the weekend where they were like, yeah, mate, I think it's probably time to get subbed. And I'm like, nah, you're not subbing me. Um, what are you carrying on for then? You're rolling around. Oh, what are you carrying on, Well, I got mate? winded in both of them. And I was like, you know when you're winded and you're just like, I, I know I'm going to be okay, just like, but I just can't breathe. Just get away from me. But the second one, I landed on his knee and I heard, like, I heard the biggest pop and I'm like, oh, no, that's me rib. Right. And I've never had a broken rib and I was like, like I was in that much agony. I was like, oh, no. I don't know what they feel like, but this has got to be it. The doctor's coming over and I'm like, mate, I reckon I've broken a rib here. And I like stand up and like trying to catch my breath because I'm still winded. And I was like, and then I'm like, hang on a minute. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> and he's like, come to the bench anyway. We'll check it out. I'm like, nah, I'm not going off. <laughs> yeah, I saw this following. interaction. <laughs> the doctor's dragging him off. Next minute I look up, Shooter's he's just, Shooter's just running to the other end of the ground. I'm like, mate, Run get away. off the ground. <laughs> You've just I, popped some guy's kneecaps <laughs> with your rib. I was just, I, yeah, I was, I, was, I was convinced that I'd broken it. And then once I got into my head that I'm actually okay, I was like, oh, sweet. Skate, skate that one. Let's go and do it again. Ross Glendening, Allen medal. That would have been a decent highlight personally, like from a career perspective. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably my only... Um, sort of achievement small, that I've had. Small pressure forward, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was... hope you do, but I don't know if the Brownlow's getting handed out the small pressure forwards. I really hope they do. You and Backman. <laughs> I feel like we're the same cut the role players. 100%. Um, but, I mean, that game, yeah, incredible. 23 touches, two goals, win the game. Um, that'd be special. Yeah, definitely. And it was um, the start of a really special year as a team. Um, and knowing that I could have um, been involved in, in taking the club forward last year and being able to um, have a, have an input in getting us back into the finals contention and having a say on where where we can end up as a, as a club and, and hopefully being a part of our first flag. Um, sort of the confidence I got out of that game was like, okay, speaking speaking back with how we do things with Neil, um, that's probably been the best confidence boost I've had, just mm. knowing that... Um, what I'm doing, I, I'm starting to get rewarded for sort of the hard yards I've done putting over the years um, and it's starting to come to fruition. And I think um, obviously that game, I, I probably got lucky. None of the midfielders racked up. And so I was like, well, kick, kick a couple of goals with a few disposals. <laughs> you know, you, you're probably probably going to – because it goes off stats and everyone says, oh, we don't read in the stats, but everyone does. Um, I didn't read stats. I voted – I voted – who won it? Did you vote? Not that one. I voted just gone. Can't remember who I voted for. I didn't. It's you meant you meant to not didn't, look at stats as the vote. Uh, really? Sarong. Sarong. Yeah, yeah. Caleb won. Yeah. But I gave votes to like. I think you gave Twitter, two to Darcy. And I gave some to Switter, I think, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, I was good that day. I like I like the eye test. So don't sell yeah. yourself short. Oh, good. The eye no, test. So. <laughs> the eye test, I'm sure you passed it. Did, you, um, <laughs> did they tell you before it was announced that you'd won? Nah, nah, I had no idea. I didn't even know, like... Do you think you are in with a chance? I knew... Well, no, nah, I didn't think... Because I just assumed that one of the midfielders would have had 35 touches and kicked yeah. a goal themselves. Um, I knew I had a bit more than of the ball than I usually have. I didn't know exactly how much I'd had, but um, I was like, oh, if I can get a vote here, that'd be pretty cool. And then I just, yeah, just do you got get lucky. A, do you get a medal? Do, yeah. you have a, do you have a medal? I've got a medal, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Unreal. I won't ask where it is because it'll probably get stolen. Uh, a couple <laughs> probably of stats. already been stolen. I don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, a nice little stat. 19 from 19, up until Sydney uh, around 18 last year, anytime you kick multiple goals in a game, 3 0 1, you did it 19 times in a row, and then you kick two against Sydney last year and you lost. Yeah. That's a good stat, mate. It is. That, I actually, yeah. When, you, when, sh when Shooter fires up, the team yeah. wins. I actually had, yeah, I, when it got to about 15, I started getting told it a fair bit on like radio interviews and stuff like that. It started coming out a bit. So I sort of, in games, I'd, I'd kick me second goal. I'd be like, oh, Ron. <laughs> oh, we're maybe, wins. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, that Sydney game, I remember kicking that second goal. And we're down by about 10 points in the last quarter when I kicked it. Oh, it's put, maybe it's put us down by 10 points. So I was like, we're on here. We're coming back. We're going to win this. <laughs> yes. And then the centre bounce, they cleared it and kicked the goal straight away. I was like, 
Oh no, the stat. <laughs> just it's done. Come on, boys. But, um, <laughs> but um, no, I've said in the past um, with that stat. I think it's a cool stat. It is, but um, you can look at it both ways, and and you could say that I'm a bit of a downhill scare. I'm only kicking goals when we're playing well, and um, I didn't look like that. No, not once. <laughs> and I think I don't know. Yeah, but. Um, you could also say that you're an important part of the team and when you play well, it means that your side's doing the right thing. You could. But could you? Yeah, you could, but that's a negative side of my brain talking. Correct. So. <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah, but it is, yeah, it's a cool stat and I think well, that stat's well and truly done now because St Kilda kicked in round one this year. I've kicked two and we lost yeah, that. You've had so. a couple of times this year, so I didn't yeah. want to speak about those, mate, so I'm keeping it positive <laughs> over here. Uh, you're taking it to negative street. The last one I want to speak about, which I think is really unique to your to your footy career and, and to, to to the AFL, is your your contracts. And, and it's a bit on the back of coming into the to the AFL as a, like a, as a mature age draft pick. There's, there's not many people that do that, um, especially over the, you know, the past 10 years. It's getting a little bit more, but you don't see many guys do it. And then kind of just, you know, re- researching for this for this podcast, like the way your contract's gone, you got delisted at the end of 2020. Is that right? Yep. And then re-rookied. So yep. like pre-listed by the footy club uh, with Buells yep. uh, and rookied. And then I... Well, I don't know if you're still on the rookie list or you certainly spent some a bit more time on the rookie list under contract. It's just been a really unique uh, contracted footy career so far. Yeah, it has, yeah. I've, I've, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. I remember speaking to Blake Akers last year and he was saying he's never played. Last year was the first year he'd played in his final year of a contract. And I said, I haven't played in not a final year of my contract. Really? So, yeah, after... So draft, yeah, 2019, oh, I got a two-year deal to start. So 2020, yes. but you sort of, it's a locked-in contract. 2020, COVID year, COVID hit, yep. list sizes were getting cut. Um, so all year, I played every game that year. So I was like, oh, surely I'll get a year, get a contract. Um, all year, Wolsey was like in close contact with me and my manager and was like, look, mate, we want to give you a contract. We just don't know what list size is going to be yet. Right. Um, and we've already, because... They had already signed a lot of guys the year before for the following year. I was in. I was like one of maybe six blokes fighting for three spots or whatever it was, um, purely because we were the only ones out of contracts, so we were the only ones that they could they, they then delist. It's just bad timing. It was just horrible timing. And then um, got to the end of the year, still hadn't heard anything, still waiting on list sizes to be announced. And it was just like, this is horrible. This, this yeah. is not. This is not going to happen. Is like can't. This can't happen. And then. They announced list sizes and then they announced that rookie list sizes were going to be a bit bigger. So primary list was going to shrink, but the rookie list was going to grow or something like that. And, and, and you could pre-list ahead of the rookie draft. Yeah, so, they, so you could delist and re-list without actually having to put someone through the rookie draft yes, in right. case, I don't know, another team poaches them or whatever. I don't know what it's for. but So they've done that with me and they actually said, they actually gave me the option of, Oh, I won't go down that path, but um, but from becoming so obviously when you get delisted, you become an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, so that's the other unique thing. You're so, a de- you're an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. You know? So I'd, instead of playing seven years, I've had to play two, and I've become an unrestricted free agent. <laughs> Which, when it comes to negotiating deals, it works in your favour because like yeah, you've it's got a little bit. Of, yeah, you've got a little bit of um, power all of a sudden. That's what that rule's meant to be for. It's meant to be for players who stay at a club a long time, give them a bit more power, but. Should have just been delisted. Straight so. in. I found a loophole. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they come to you and say they delist you and then like we'll just pick you straight back up. So that's, that's I mean, so you didn't have to go through that. Am I ever going to play again? Situation. Yeah. 100%. That's, yeah. That's cool. And then so, yeah, then they give me a one-year deal on the rookie list. Yeah. Um, got through that year. And then. You played 20 games in that year. This, yeah, the rookie so list year. Yeah. yeah. And so then. You played seven in your first, 17 in 2020, which was all the games. Your rookie listed year, you played twenty games. So yeah. even though you're on, you're on these rookie contracts, you played every game. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I was at first I was pissed off. I was like, "This is so unfair! Like, how could you do this?" So I've played every game. Like, it's just so a bit disrespectful, or whatever. But probably that was the immature, passionate side of me just being angry at not getting my own way again. And <laughs> yes, um, and then so yeah, that year, that next year, I just. Went through the year as it was and got offered a new deal and um, and as as it turned out, because I was an unrestricted free agent, I actually had a bit of interest elsewhere and Hawks came pretty hard. Hawks coming hard, right? Um, and it, yeah, 
I, to be honest, I actually got pretty close to, to looking at going up, getting away but just because of the shit that had happened the year before. I was still a bit of bad blood almost. Mm. Um, I was still a bit pissed off but um, definitely made the right decision to stay. Um, and um, and then, yeah, so I, last year I was on the rookie list again. First year of my new contract was on the rookie list again. Going into this year, they just said, oh, we're putting you back onto the primary list. So I think this year I'm back. I don't. I to be honest, I don't even know, but I'm pretty sure I'm back on the primary list. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it's so unique, just seeing the ups and downs, and it's been a journey, mate. Like you, it has, yeah. And you're not a journeyman. You've been yeah, I've like, played five years, <laughs> <laughs> but you've just been, you've been incredibly consistent, right? Mm. So reading those that story, if I just didn't say your name and I said, all right, this player comes into the competition, 20 years old, he plays seven games in his first year, and then he plays every game effectively in the next three years, but he's spends time on a rookie list. He's an unrestricted free agent. Uh, he's, you know, he's getting interest from other clubs. Like, it's just really cool. I think it's like a positive thing, to be honest. I mean, you, if I know probably at stages it would have been hard for you, but so you seem like the sort of person that the way you play footy and just speaking to you now, that that's built some resilience in you. 100%, yeah. And to be honest, like my whole footy journey going up from a kid has been exactly the same. It's all huh. been – there's always been a bit of – um controversy around it and, uh, and it hasn't gone away since I made AFL. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so embedded in it now and and I love it and embrace it and, yeah, I'm just happy about where I am today and playing footy every week and playing on a good side and um, just being happy. Fan mm. favourite too. Yeah. Big time fan favourite. Never seen social media blow up like it did. Yeah, true. Uh, off the back of putting <laughs> Lockie Schultz's name on it. So unless you've got any further questions, Dan. Oh, oh I'm curious about because uh, we recently went through this. Um, oh, yeah. With we, I don't know if we talked about when we were recording or not, but we talked about Fat Chat, um, which was our um, – our decision to drop a bit of drop a bit of weight. You, a couple of fat blokes drinking too many beers yeah. trying to keep the weight off. You wouldn't know what it's like. Well, maybe you would from 18 to 19. But don't worry. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> but you did, you, that, did you, you lost a bit um, coming into last season. Was that like a concerted effort from you or like a, a thing for you to um, change how you're playing or something? Yeah. So at the end of 20, 2020, I think it was. What was last end year? End of 2021. 2021, I did a hammy. Yeah, and it was after the hubs and stuff like that, and I got it. I must. I got a bit carried away and put on a bit of weight at the hubs. Just all you can eat buffets and stuff like that. I just got to be excited. <laughs> put on a bit of weight and did a hammy and put down that I was too heavy and I was for my running capacity. I was trying to run too hard for the amount of weight I was carrying. Um, sitting down with the sports scientists and stuff, and we discovered that that's probably the case. Um, so going over weight off season, I think I was about eighty seven and a half kilos when I left, and I was like. This is this is ridiculous. Like this is can't play at that weight. If if as a 178 centimeter small forward playing at 87 and a half kilos, like what do you want to be? You want to be a key forward? You want to be a small forward? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, I got to drop. I got to drop weight. So that off season, all I did was um, put my mind to losing as much weight as I possibly could and come back fitter and, and stronger. And um, and it, it's easy to drop weight, but it's it's hard to stay as strong as you can as strong as you are while you're dropping it. Um, so I did a lot of work um, with the dietitians and, and sports scientists and doing extra crosses and, and whatnot in that off season and ended up dropping about seven kilos in the off season, the two month off season and come back about 80 and felt as healthy as I've ever been. And, um, and then it's just easy to maintain. And then I was making sure that I was still hitting PBs in the gym. And, um, and then from there, it sort of set me up to just maintain where I'm at and um, still try and get as strong as I can and keep keep as strong as I possibly can. But I learned a lot about my own body in that time as well, and um, and I learned that I can I can see signs of sl when I start s slipping up a little bit in terms of body weight and and body contrast, fat contrast, and stuff like that. I can sort of see signs now, and I can get on top of it early before it becomes a problem. And um, and I think that's held me in really good stead to play as much footy as I possibly can. I haven't missed many games over the last few years, and I put that down to just being well prepared and um, and listening to my body as well. Dan's a big jumper number fan. Um, oh yeah, I could ask maybe, about. Oh sorry, mate. Yeah. Um, uh, changing from twenty eight to five. Yeah, was that? Um, he was trying to he was trying to lose weight on his body and off yeah. his back, mate. Drop a number. Yeah, that, that's where half the weight went. <laughs> 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 no, I um, I. I remember – so I was at, at Williamstown, I was number five. Right. So I loved number five and then Ches was number five when I got there. I was number 28. 
didn't hate 28, it's a bit heavy. I like, I like single digit numbers. Um, Ballas, Ballas was number one when he left. Hogs took number one. Um, and man, we when the, Hogs we left. Were in the conversation for number one? You sound like uh, surely. Sort of. Like me and Ballas spoke about it and he was pretty keen to give it to me. And then and when who, Hog, who Hogs, Hogan. Jesse Hogan, then he left the following year. How'd that go? And I was living with him and like we we're real close mates. And then so he's left and then I was like, well, sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, Ballas wanted to give it to me. Hogs is my best mate. Surely it just comes into my hands here. So I, um, but this was the end of 20, when was this? 2020. That was the end of 2020. So I, I hadn't even got a contract here. And I was like, yes. how do I ask for a jumper number without? <laughs> Can I have the number one? I'm, I might not be here next year. Do you want year. a contract? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it was, yeah, it was then. And then um, they ended up giving it to Sam Sturt. I think Sam Sturt asked for it. Um, and then I was just like, oh, this is what it is. I'm happy to get a contract at this stage. So I played in 28 again. And then at the end of that year, Ches left. Reese Conker was gone. Um, and then I think Bally might have rang me and said, these jumping numbers are up. Do you want one of them? I said, well, five. I was number five at Williamstown. It makes sense, doesn't it? And then so I just, yeah, jumped into it. And for the mental side of it, I just love having a good number. Knowing that I'm running out with number five on the back is just so much better than 28. <laughs> That's great. What's wrong with 28? Nah. No, I'm... Any notable 28s? <sighs> um, uh, no. I mean, you're the jumper number guy. No. I'm sure there is. Mate, Max, here, have a little look. See if there's any jumper number 28s rolling around. The best. <laughs> just have Give a Google. The best number 28. AFL best number 28. Ash Sampy 28. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? I'm pretty sure. Gee, that's Tommy rogue, Cole. rogue by me. Tommy Cole. I mean, Jesus. What kind of. Hey? Neil Erasmus. Neil Erasmus, nah. Nah, I mean, I mean he, he could be great, not great. He'll probably yet. change his I numbers still like, anyway. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I, want, I want some. Tim Membre. Tim Membre from, from um, St Kilda. Okay, we all right, we'll, all right. we'll get a follow-up on that. I, t- I think it's time for social media. Yeah, let's do it. Because you told me you have to leave at some point in time. Yeah, 2.30. That's all right. Um, social media, not social, social. Yes, I know you know. But it's important to understand that this may be the greatest <laughs> segment on podcasting in the flow. <laughs> uh, social media, for the fans, you've heard enough from Dan and I. We've got questions by the audience to you. You can answer them how you like. You can be quick and shooting, shooting them off or you can go long. We don't care. We're going to start with... Binger underscore underscore stinger. Uh, what was your go-to meal on Fat Friday as an apprentice or tr- as an apprentice? Oh, <clears throat> early days in a chuga there wasn't much, so you just go to like um, cafes and just get dimmies and potato cakes and chips oh, and pies. Potato cakes, oh. But it was yeah, it was in the morning you'd get your the tradie breakfast, so you'd go to the Seven Eleven and you'd get a pie or a sausage roll and a. One dollar coffee, or if, if you need a bit more of a buzz, you get a Red Bull oh, <laughs> at seven o'clock in the morning. Dan Love loves that. that right now. Um, when I moved to Melbourne, though, I was sort of I remember I just ate Subway like every day. I just loved Subway. <laughs> yes. um, but on Fridays, yeah, sometimes we treat ourselves a bit of Colonel or um, <laughs> HSP snack packs. Yeah, good. So <laughs> we did it all. We, we did eat it all. We tried everything. <laughs> it's bloody good. It was actually remarkable that you checked in at 49 on the skin fold, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, now, we, we do have a, like, we've got a decent Achuka following. Got to yeah. say, I'm pretty sure Huntsman, he's from Achuka. Yeah, he is, yep. Underscore Huntsman, underscore 06, underscore. We appreciate the underscore. What's your best memory playing for Moama? Um, <laughs> do you win flags? Lost one. That's probably my best memory still, that final series. we It's a top six there. We just scraped in in sixth place. I went back for the final series. So we sort of in elimination the whole way through. Um, just kept – we just would knock off the better sides every week and just kept winning and winning and winning and then got to the grand final against a team that hadn't lost a game all year and sort of no hope. We've got to play on our home ground because it alternates what ground – the grannies on that in right. that league. That year was at Miami and got to play there. And first quarter was about, I think it was like 45 to zero their way. And we're like, oh, no, this is horrible. Then we came back and um, with about a minute to go, I kicked a goal to put us three points behind. Holy shit. And you're thinking this is it. Yeah, I'm like, no way it's happening. Fairy tale. And then they've – no, sorry, I put us – what did I do? I put us – Two, uh, four points behind. No, two points behind, and then they won the center clearance, kicked a point out of center clearance, and there was like ten seconds left. Got to get it end to end. Got it out. Um, 
I got it on like the half back flank, rolled around, kicked it to a bloke on centre half forward. Instead of rolling in board and having a shot, he was rolled out, kicked it to another bloke. He's ran inside 50 from like the pocket, had a shot. Sirens go on, balls in the air, hasn't made the distance. Oh, oh my God. It was heartbreaking. But, um, but that bunch of boys that I played with back there was just su- such a good bunch of boys. And to be able to have them, be able to catch up with them for a premiership reunion would have been ideal, but um, still close with most of them. So Unreal. Love that. Uh, Oli underscore Ma. Uh, the Border Inn Mot- uh, Hotel in Moama have two framed photos, one of Lockie Schultz um, and one of Todd Murphy, Australian cricketer. Um, but there's only room for one on the wall. Which one goes up? I'll, I'll let Toddy have that one. He's a good man, Toddy. So <laughs> I'm sure you can find another small spot for, for my photo. <laughs> Put it down Check in the, on the back of, Check it down on the back of the toilet door or something. <laughs> <laughs> Facing inwards as well so you're watching people <laughs> sitting on there. Moving on. Uh, we are flag metal. Hello, fellas. How much money have you lost in poker on those flights? Um, personally, me, not too much. Do you, do you boys play poker on the flights? Yeah, because we've got our own planes. So we've got the charter planes now. We oh, just really? sort of branch out and we'll poker every flight. So it's a great way to make the trip go quickly, but can get um, pretty heated. Uh, but since since Griff and Blake have left, it's become a lot more tamer. Um, <laughs> still, boys do go hard. Andy Brayshaw, for one, he goes very hard. Does he? Brennan Cox goes hard. Um, but, yeah, I know my limits. If I get down a couple of hundred or whatever, I'll – yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's great. Very good. Uh, Luke.ev. Uh, how does it feel to be criminally underrated? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that. I feel like you can't be on. No, no, I'm not answering that. Feels great. Uh, Ben.harding. Uh, apparently, Shooter has made an Insta account for his dog and his girlfriend is not happy. Is this true or false? <laughs> Do you know who that is? I know Hardo. Okay. Yeah. Um, true or false, mate? It, it's false. My missus made the account and he claims that it's me running it. If you've seen the <laughs> captions, it's embarrassing. But does the dog talk? The dog the talks. It's, yeah, she's made it as if she's the dog. Do you know what the worst part is with those when other pet accounts talk to it and then they have <laughs> they conversations? Reply. Oh, boy. With respect to our, 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 uh, our, our fans here, respect yeah. to Hardo. So your story is that your missus is running the account and you're pissed off about it. But Hardo's contesting that you're running the account and she's pissed off with it. Yeah, he's, trying to, yeah, he's trying to get in my head here. Oh, <laughs> doing a horrible job. I don't know what's right or wrong. Just, I mean, we've only got two sides of the story. Well, the account's you. on private, so I won't be accepting any follow requests. <laughs> I won't I be accepting oh, I'll be oh, making a miss is not accepting. He's put his foot <laughs> in. <laughs> Hard I'll be happy with that. I reckon very good. Uh, <laughs> this is good. Harris. Carlin. Who's your favourite West Coast player? <laughs> Got to be Coley. No. Yeah, I love Coley. Obviously grew up with him, played played a lot of footy. I love Duggo. Duggo's a legend. Who's in the corner, Duggo? To be honest, they're all really good fellas. Like, there's, I know we've got a strong rivalry, but off the field, really good fellas. Very good. Bit of honesty from the big fella because it's the correct thing. Uh, Troy um, Nabamban. Uh, so this is the guy. Oh, who plays, this hey. is the guy who plays the guitar on the roof at Optus. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, can you hear the "We Will Rock You" guitar before the bounce? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, love it. Um, this is a good request. And he says, "I have about fifteen seconds after the coin toss to mess around. Do you have any requests?" And if you don't have any right now. Put him through because we are in contact with Troy. 15 seconds. So he's got 15 seconds that he can do a just little a riff. Just a faff about guitar. Of a, yeah, right. Are you a music fan? Yeah, I love... I reckon give him something like... Would it be like heavy metal, do you reckon? Well, but I reckon you can give him like a real like rogue and, yeah. he'll, and he'll turn it into heavy metal. Like yeah, if you Fred said, again. Yes. Play some Fred again. Wow. Great. <laughs> Troy, <laughs> you're listening. Yep. We'll be there the next week. Troy, I want to hear some Fred again on the- He'll do it. He'll, He'll, He'll do sick. it. Yeah. Very good. Like it. Uh, Daniel.Theo1. Uh, what's it like being a smaller high-pressure forward in the comp? Uh, sorry. What's it like being a smaller high-pressure forward in the comp and what advice do you give to someone of similar build trying to make it and or get better? Um, oh, I spoke about it sort of before. It's just being able to swing your mindset from – Defensive to attacking and back to and, and then vice versa. Um, just knowing the state of the play and and then getting getting on top of of the smaller things. And obviously, my game myself starts with pressure, so I know that everything else is going to stem from there. Um, but 
sort of if you get your footwork right when it comes to pressure and get your mind, mindset in like in a really aggressive place before games, then it's going to hold you in good stead, I think. I want to know good. the answers to these questions. I want to know if the questions give away who they're from. So we're just going to have the questions first and okay. then I can tell you who so they're the from. So the first one, French Bulldog or Sausage Dog? French Bulldog every day. I reckon that's from Blake Akers. They're all from the same person. Uh, number two. Uh, do you do you regret interrupting Kick Churchill's concert in Cottesloe last year? <laughs> oh, no, I don't regret a thing. I love Kim. He's a good man. So, oh, what, Kim. Yeah, I, I was sorry. wondering who Kick was. Who's Kim? Who's what's happened there? Can you tell us the story there or not? We, oh. If it's if it's a little bit PG, we've got a segment on uh, for our VIPs about three hundred VIPs. We tell one story at the end of the show. Is it somewhere you, something you could tell there? Um. Yes, I suppose, yeah. Do you regret interrupting Kim Churchill's concert in Cottesloe like last year? Okay, we're going to find out. We're going to get to the bottom of that after this. And like, number three? Uh, fish and chips still your pregame meal? Not anymore. That was back in the tradie days. <laughs> so it wasn't Blake. Pretty close, though. So. All right. You have a thing. <laughs> Alex Pierce? No, no, it's from Griffin. Oh, that was my next guess. <laughs> it's from Griffin. What? He wouldn't say sausage dog. That's, he's tried to tried to hide himself there. Right, okay. Thank you, Griff. Uh, Tappy95, last one. Okay, how does Lockie like his eggs cooked? Sincerely, the egg man. Um, I love scrambled, to be honest. Yeah, I'm more, if I go and get, go and get um Do you switch it eggs. up? Sometimes. I, I don't mind. I'll, poached, scrambled. As long as there's a good good amount of holiday sauce with it. Oh yes, very yeah, good. Yeah. That'll look after your skinnies too. Uh, did you have fun, mate? That's it. That was that was unreal, boys. Thanks so much. Unreal. Um, uh, Any time. Shooter, shooter said doesn't really do these very often, but I thought you're outstanding, yeah, mate. Very, very good. good. Uh, you can you. follow us on socials. Backchat double underscore. You can see some highlights of this chat over there. All the good stuff at backchatpodcast.com.au. Become a patron of the podcast to hear uh, Shooter tell us what happened at this concert. We're going to find out in just a little bit. Uh, all of everything brought to you here on Backchat by Fleet Network for season 2023. Big thanks to our other partners, Swimply, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Little Cameras. Uh, that's it, boys. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.